Horrible Harry Moves Up to Third Grade, Chapter 5, Murder in the Mine. I'm actually reading with a Rottweiler puppy laying on my lap this time. <laughs> the next morning, Miss Mackle said, Boys and girls, we are going to the old Newgate Prison and Copper Mine September 30th. When everyone cheered, I motioned to Harry to meet me at the pencil sharpener. I had to talk. Harry broke his pencil on the side of the desk, then joined me. What's up? He asked. Remember how you were kind of scared to ride the elevator in the drop of doom? Harry paused. He never liked admitting he was afraid of anything. Yeah, he barely whispered. Well, I never went down into that copper mine. I was afraid. It was hard for me to say it to you. Harry flashed his white teeth. Hey, Doug, you can do it. If I could do the doom ride, you can walk through a mine. Pretend you're a spider. They love cool, dark places. Thanks, Harry. I groaned. After I sharpened my pencil, I added, You'll stick close by. Like Elmer's glue, he whispered. September 30th came too soon. Song Lee and Ida and Mary sat in the front of Harry and me on the bus. The girls played hangman. Their first word had eight letters. P-R-I-S-O-N-E-R. -E prisoner. I sure felt like one sitting next to Harry. I was trapped. And there was no getting out of it. Harry could tell I was getting nervous. My knees were shaking. He opened his backpack. Try not to think about it. Think about other things, like... Then Harry pulled out something wrapped in aluminum foil. Remember this? I watched Harry unwrap it. Cindy's burnt wiener, I said. Shh. Harry put a finger to his mouth. He's sitting across the aisle. It's a secret. Old Sid doesn't know I have it. What are you doing with it? I'm not sure. I might just keep it until it becomes a fossil. A wiener fossil? <laughs> when I laughed, my knees stopped shaking. Sure. Or it might come in handy sometime for something else. Harry... He was a piece of work. I sure was glad he was my partner. He made me forget about things while we were on the bus. So here's Harry holding the burnt hot dog and Doug sitting in the bus. <laughs> An hour later, we got to the mine. We got off the bus and walked over to the little museum shop. It was fun to crunch through all the autumn leaves. The trees were red, orange, yellow, and brown. It was a beautiful sunny day, I kept telling myself. The inside of the museum was small. There were all kinds of books for sale, some rocks and Granby copper coins. There were also soda and candy machines, but Miss Mackle stood in front of them like a football guard. Spend your money wisely, she said. Sidney made a long face. He had his coins ready. Man, that's no fair. I wanted to get a crunchy chocolate bar. As soon as I spotted the boys room, I ducked inside. I always have to go when I get nervous. Later, when everyone had bags of souvenirs, a gray-haired man said, Welcome, boys and girls. Gather round. You are about to visit the first copper mine in the 13 colonies. It also was our first state prison. Back in the 1700s, prisoners worked in the mine. What crimes did they commit? Mary asked. She had her pencil and notebook and was taking notes. Most of them were horse thieves, counterfeiters, and burglars. What did the burglar steal? Sidney asked. Well, in 1780, seven men broke into Captain Ebenezer Dayton's house and tied up his wife with a torn sheet. Where was Ebenezer? Mary snapped. He was out of town. Mary rolled her eyes. So what happened? Mary asked. Well, they kept her tied up in a chair for two hours while they ransacked the house. They took coats, cloaks, gowns, silk handkerchiefs, silver shoe buckles, a spyglass, two muskets, four halberds, and 450 pounds of gold, silver, and copper coins. What's a halberd? Mary asked. It's a long-handled axe. We followed the elderly man outside to a courtyard and brick wall. When he leaned over, he picked up some rocks. Just about everywhere you look, you can see copper rocks. If it has green on it, it's copper. Mary bent down and pointed at something green. This isn't copper, she said. It's someone's half-eaten lime lollipop. 
gross, Ida said. There's a spider on it, too. Don't kill it, Harry said, looking at Sydney. Single file, please, the guide said. We're about to enter the mine. So here's the picture of the man telling the story about the wife getting tied up while they stole everything. Oh boy, I said to Harry, here we go. Harry walked right behind me. He was so close I could feel his warm breath on my neck. Remember, Doug, you're a spider. You love the underground world. I'll try, I whispered. Slowly, I walked into the mine. The path ahead of me zigzagged down a sloping hill. The space seemed to get smaller and darker. I clung to the railing when there was one. Neato, Harry said. This is cool. The guide heard Harry. Actually, it's 52 degrees all year round in this mine. Cool, Harry repeated. I stopped walking and looked at my arms. There were goose pimples on them. Keep moving, Harry said. I like the lanterns along the path into the mine, Mary said. They're neat. Hey, water is dripping on my head, Ida said. It tickles, Sun Lee giggled. The guide smiled. There's water in the earth. We're inside the earth now. Inside the earth? I was really underground. As the hike got darker and wetter, the stone ceiling got lower and lower. I got more afraid. I wasn't going to tell anyone, though. I just bent over as I walked and stayed close to Harry. Ten minutes later, it seemed like we were miles inside the earth. My heart was beating like one of those huge gongs. Song Lee took a picture. I love rocks, she said. Maybe I'll be a miner when I grow up. Not me, I thought. What if some boulders fell and blocked our way out back? What if I fell down a hole like Injun Joe? Finally, I had to ask the question. So here's a picture of them looking around. Harry looks happy. Doug does not. <laughs> How much longer are we going to stay down here? About 10 minutes, the guide said. 10 minutes. That was 10 times 60 seconds, which made 600 seconds to go. I started counting backward. 600, 599, 598. Sydney must have noticed I was nervous because we started teasing me about it. Got a case of the heebie-jeebies like Harry did on that drop a doom ride last summer? Harry raised a fist. When Sydney laughed, I could hear Harry growl. You can see over here, there's a large deposit of copper, the guide said, as he shone his flashlight in the corner. Sydney turned around and whispered, It's really the great boogeyman. Suddenly, I got mad. I never believed boogeyman stories. Sydney wasn't going to frighten me. Now, I was more determined than ever to pretend I was not afraid. I kept on counting. Only this time, I didn't say it out loud. Harry gave Sid Sydney a final warning. You better stop fooling around, Sid the Squid. After we turned and entered a small empty room, the guide asked everyone to sit down for a while and rest. His voice echoed off the stone walls. I have a ghost story to tell you, he said. I grabbed Harry's ankle and held on to it tightly. There once was a prisoner named Abel Starkey who saved $100. What was he in for? Mary asked. Counterfeiting money. He was serving a 20 year sentence. The guide continued the story. Starkey offered the cash to a guard if he helped him escape. The guard agreed because he wanted the money. He told Starkey about a path in the mine that was rarely used. It was behind a locked metal door. It led to an underground well that had an old rope used for pulling buckets. The guard said Starkey could use it to climb to freedom. What the guard didn't tell Starkey was that the rope was frayed in the middle. The guard didn't really want Starkey to escape. It was too risky. What if Starkey got caught, the guard thought. What if he told on him? The night of the escape, when everyone was sleeping in the mine, Starkey sneaked down the path to the old metal door. Yes, the guard had left it unlocked. Starkey opened it and raced to the well. When he got there, he climbed onto the rope and pulled himself up, up, up. When he got halfway, the rope snapped and he fell to his death. 
Legend has it that Starkey's ghost still roams the mine today, searching for a way out. Sidney closed his eyes and groped around with his hands. Ouch, Harry said, you hit my head. I'm Starkey's ghost walking through the mine. Cut it out, Sid, Harry growled. He knew I was in bad shape. When Sidney kept it up, Harry unbuckled his backpack and took something out. It was too dark to see what. Then Harry stood up and tapped Sidney on the shoulder with his finger. What? Sidney said. Harry didn't answer. He just kept tapping Sidney's shoulder. Stop tapping me! When Harry didn't stop, Sidney grabbed Harry's finger and pulled on it. Ah! Sidney screamed, I pulled Harry's finger off! Ah! The class yelled. We could tell Sidney was holding on to something and flopping it in the air. When the guide shone his flashlight on Sidney's hand, we all groaned. The burnt wiener. <laughs> so you are the one who stole it, Sid said, glaring at Harry. I borrowed it, he said, and now I'm returning it to you. Everybody started cracking up, including me. It felt good to laugh in the middle of that dark, wet mine. It also felt good when we started walking back and when I first spotted light at the top of the mine entrance. As soon as I got outside, I lay down on the ground and kissed the grass. Ah, <laughs> oh, I said, sweet earth, beautiful sky, delicious dirt. Oh, Doug, so happy to be out of the mine. <laughs> Harry punched me in the arm. You did it, Spido. I punched Harry back in the arm. Yeah, I did, didn't I? Miss Mackle tapped my head as she made a quick count of our class. Suddenly she exclaimed, we're missing one student. Hmm. So we'll find out the last chapter next time.